Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sean Purgal. I'm an osteopath and today I want to speak with you how you can avoid losing money every year. This is the second part of the videos. In the previous video, I spoke about how you, what is the easiest way for you to increase your, <coughs> excuse me, to increase your annual income by 10% every year. Uh, and I gave you some ideas uh, about marketing, that marketing uses emotions and there are, it, it has two principles, the pleasure principle, happiness principle, and the pain pain avoidance principle and the previous one I spoke about was the easiest way to uh, increase your income which was the example of the happiness marketing pleasure marketing this is uh, I, sp I will speak to you exactly about the same topic but is uh, to avoid pain which is losing money so you can see when you do marketing to your, for your patients uh, you have to decide you want to use pleasure or pain uh, most marketers use one or another they're famous for one or another I say I uh, like pleasure more but the, the research shows pain principle is more effective you can use both of them there is no reason that you can just use one type okay how you can avoid losing money every year is basically by making sure at least you raise your annual income by 2% as you know, inflation differs in every country, but in Canada, for example, the last year was about 2%. So it means if you make $100,000 last year in Canada, this year, if you make $100,000, your purchasing power will be $98,000 because inflation, if it's 2%, eats $2,000 of your profit. So what you could have buy last year with one hundred thousand dollar now you you cannot now uh, your money is worth ninety eight thousand dollars so this is the mistake a lot of manual osteopaths who are not my students they make they do not raise their fees their fee remains the same hourly fee for many years and they feel they're making the same money every year but it's actually not true the inflation cuts into their profit and they don't realize that. This is what makes me so sad about education in other osteopathic schools, other health colleges. Nobody teaches this kind of business lessons to students. I teach over 200 business lessons to my students. I teach them everything I know uh, about business. I teach them how I became a multimillionaire, everything. I don't hold nothing back because I don't think my students are my competitions other schools are run by practitioners who don't teach everything to, uh, to the students because they fear those students become the competitions in their market against them but I don't feel like that I teach everything because my goal is to ensure every town with a population of hundred thousand people have at least one manual osteopath in it to do that I have to ensure my students are skilled manual osteopaths and also they make good money that's why we graduate successful wealthy manual osteopaths because once they become manual osteopaths they attract friends and others who be, want to become manual osteopaths as well and the whole profession expands that was how uh, we founded our school 10 years ago and now we are the largest provider of manual osteopathic education in the world with alumni in 72 countries over half of the manual osteopaths in English speaking Canadian provinces are my students. I founded the Osteopathic Chronic Pain Clinics of Canada three years ago in Toronto with one clinic. Now we have 329 clinics in 30 countries. This is the power of osteopathy, the power of making people wealthy. When they are wealthy, they make they're happy and actually our alumni have a 98% job satisfaction rate and this expands the profession but others they don't teach it I strongly believe we are the only school in the world teaching this kind of business lessons and that's actually why we get tons of manual also but from other schools in Canada Europe Australia come join us just to learn from my business lessons these are the things that make you wealthy and money 
can help you a lot. It helps you. It helps uh, people around you, your country, everybody. Oh, look at this beautiful dog. Hello, sweetie. Come here. You want to be in my video? Come, come. Good dog. Good dog. Good dog. Good dog. <laughs> nice dog. I am, by the way, I am in a uh, marathon in, uh, near Key West in Florida. It's a beautiful day here. Uh, it's lovely. Uh, I left Naples for a few days of relaxation, but this video is my relaxation. Anyway, so uh, please make sure you, you increase at least your fee by 2% every year to not lose any money. But I highly recommend to you, and that's what my students do, they increase their fee by 10% a year. And that means in 10 years, they can double their income easily without doing nothing else, with just, with just doing, uh, uh, raising their fee, they can double their income in 10 years. And the good thing is, this increase in the fee, everything you generate is just pure profit. Your expense remains the same, expenses of running the clinic remains the same, and everything else you make is just pure profit. So this is a good way for you to increase it. You can easily uh, make a lot of money without doing nothing. And as I said in the last video, make sure your overly fee is not a round number like $100, $110, $120, $130 because that makes people remember what was your overly fee and when you increase it, some might not like it so much. I never seen anybody leave a osteopathic clinic because of the raise in overly fee, but still some people might not be so happy. So uh, what I recommend, you don't make your overly fee a one number. Make it for example $126 or $133. And then when you increase it from $133 to, uh, for example, $144, for nobody will notice that difference but all, all of course always in your website everywhere make a note in new section that effective so and so your fee will your new overly fee will be so much and as you know by law you have to know all your uh, to let all your patients current patients when they see uh, they come to you they they shouldn't uh, know your new fee and it should be posted in the uh, in, in the walls of your clinic as well as in the constant form uh, anyway that's about it uh, have a nice day enjoy the rest of this beautiful day it's a really lovely day in Key West now I was in Naples uh, for, uh, working and decided to just come here and uh, to the Key West area this is town of Marathon uh, it's beautiful marina uh, I love always to stay uh, near water. I live, as you know, in Panama and in Panama Monday to Friday. Uh, I live right on the beach uh, and during the weekend, I, I, uh, 30 minutes away, I go on top of the mountain, uh, 3,000 feet on top of the mountain. I have a place there and uh, I, it's my silence retreat. No human being, no TV, uh, no radio, no music, just doing yoga. Taekwondo, meditation, it's just beautiful uh, and uh, it's really, really fun and nice being wealthy. And this is one reason I really wish all of you to become wealthy. I was at one time 34 years ago when I came as a refugee to Canada. I was homeless, I slept in shelters uh, and uh, I will, uh, my first job was washing dishes for $3.75 an hour. Now I'm a multimillionaire. Now my friend, uh, Honorable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, invites me for breakfast and I get to stay here in these luxury places near the water, travel everywhere. I travel once a month. My nickname is the Traveling Osteopath and uh, God, I'm grateful to God uh, for giving me this beautiful life to surround me with all this beauty uh, and you can do as well if I could do you can do as well I was never good in business I was a typical nerd academic nerd just studying and studying and reading with a thick glasses baggy pants and I changed my life I 
My first job as a chiropractor, I was a chiropractor before becoming manual osteopath. My first job, I was charging $20 per session and uh, you know, I made $2,000 a month uh, as a chiropractor and then uh, I saw how my boss and others, they made millions and uh, I copied them, I learned from them, I read tons of books, I read every single business book they had at uh, chapters in Toronto and I still read every day about business. I listen to thousands of audio CDs. Uh, I have a big library of business books uh, and I read and I read and I change my life. From $20 a session, I increased it to $250 a session and at the end I was seeing, I, I was charging $1,000 per hour. Uh, but now I'm retired, I don't see patients, I do other things. Uh, and uh, you know but those things set me up uh, it was the reason now, uh, now i have enough money to do for osteopathy whatever i like actually we are the only school in canada that is a non-profit school it means i as an owner cannot take even one dollar out of national academy of osteopathy i do not take any money from national academy of osteopathy all the money we make we put back uh, in National Academy of Osteopathy. For example, my clinic osteopathy, chronic pain clinics of Canada, all its expenses for the head office is given by my school and uh, my universities. All the money, the manual osteopaths in that clinic who are all my students, we only ha uh, work with our students. Uh, all the money they make is given 100% of to them. My clinic is a non-profit clinic means I cannot take even one dollar from the clinic. We give all the money to my students. It's all because I don't need money from my schools. Because I made money enough from my businesses before. I was a very successful business person as a chiropractor. I was the number one busiest chiropractor in Canada, seeing 150 patients a day. And I made good money. And this is uh, the reason nobody can compete with us because I don't work for money. My schools don't work for money. We work for, to expand the profession while all other schools work to have a living income so they cannot compete with us and they think we're crazy they they always wonder how we do the things we do uh, be, but we do it because for me it's a charity it's a hobby i do it to expand the profession i do it for a legacy to help people there are millions of people look at here i mean us more than 300 million people for over 100 years they did not have access to chronic pain management i brought manual osteopathy here i opened the first manual osteopathic university here when my lawyer said over 10 lawyers said you cannot open a uh, canadian cannot open a university in us i should my lawyer how to do it. He asked me to come and work with him. He said, you know more about the law than I do. Uh, you know, the, everybody said you cannot open a university in the U.S. Or you cannot teach osteopathy in the U.S. American, Phys um, American Osteopathic Association will not allow it. Osteopathic physicians will not allow it. But actually, osteopathic physicians, they love us because we provide something they don't. Uh, there, there are over 100,000 osteopathic physicians in the U.S. Only 1,000 of them do manual osteopathy. We are like their assistants. Some of my alumni actually work as their assistants. They don't look at us as competition. And totally, we are not on the radar. Uh, we don't compete with them. We don't take their clients. And American Osteopathic Association has been very nice. I, I, I communicated with them. I sent them letter, and all they concern about is our alumni not to call themselves osteopaths. So. Uh, we, I brought here because I want people everywhere to have to access to this beautiful, wonderful healthcare. It's a lovely profession. It does miracles on a day-to-day -day basis. We treat last resort cases, cases that no, others cannot help. And we do. It's a sin for me. It's unethical for me to sit down on my gluteus maximus. Don't do nothing to expand the profession. Be everybody deserves to have access to this beautiful lovely profession and it is my job until my last breath to do so and that is my goal in life that is my reason for being to do so anyway have a nice day uh, take care enjoy the rest of the day 
I love you all. Thank you for watching this video. My goal is to, I, my students are successful, but I want other manual osteopaths to become successful too. I love you and I feel bad that your school didn't, pro, you know, you didn't uh, provide this kind of education for you. Uh, for the same degree and dip, uh, diploma in uh, Canada, they charge up to uh, $45,000 while we charge fifteen thousand dollar they take they teach five years one week in a month uh, but total hours is like less than one thousand five hundred we teach in one year full time two thousand two hundred hours and they yet you know they graduate uh, uh, manual osteopaths who don't have any business knowledge how to run their practice eff effectively because osteopathy is so good in treating the, uh, chronic pain. These manual osteopaths still make good income, average $90,000 per year, but they can do better. My students are averaging 150,000 and I want you manual osteopaths who are not my students also do better. Have a nice day, may God be with you and uh, I wish you a happy day. I wish you be happy all the time. Take care until next time. Bye for now. Thank you for watching this video. Namaste.